about benchmarking. So what is benchmarking? Benchmarking is a marketing tool. We use it to observe and, and analyze the practice of competitors to improve your own website. So it's like uh, looking for a good idea on other websites. Nowadays, there are a lot of websites, so there is a lot of competition. For example, if you want to buy books, you can search on internet and uh, there will be a lot of websites for buying books. So you can uh, look on the most famous uh, website and uh, look for the best idea to use it for your own website. That is what benchmarking is. So there is different types of benchmarking. Uh, first of all, there is the competitive benchmarking. So we it's to take ideas from competitors or friends or stranger, and uh, you 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 run the risk to to take bad ideas. So you have to be careful. So for example, we have two sites, OD and BMW. You can see that. Uh, those sites are pretty much the same, so there is the innovation in the middle and the navigation bar in the, in the top. In the top. Uh, one of the benefits of uh, competitive benchmarking is to, is to establish current position with respect to competitors and create a point of reference against which to measure speed of improvement. And then there is before and after benchmarking. So uh, the before and after benchmarking um, can be applied to one uh, website um, over time to measure improvement. Uh, so for example, you have iTunes who create different version. Um, so the oldest version is uh, uh, between those versions is uh, the point 7.0 and the new one is 11.0. Uh, and uh, one of uh, the benefits of before and after benchmarking is uh, to create a point of reference against which you can measure improvements. To conclude, benchmarking is a useful tool, but you have to use it carefully because of plagiarism. For example, this is two websites. Uh, there is a study VZ who was created after Facebook and uh, we can see that uh, he used benchmarking but a little too much because the two sites are exactly the same. So that's why uh, um, study VZ was uh, accusing of copying Facebook. So benchmarking is a useful tool but you have to be careful. Thank you for listening. privacy.
Vielen Dank. Super, wie schon online kann ich fangen. Marcus, this is uh, Vianolo. We're going to talk about the uses statistic and search log analysis. So, what is uh, what is uses statistic? It can be users' behavior on the site, what do they do on the site, uh, trace user activity, page information, uh, number of hits of each page per day, most popular page. Um, you can observe trends. Put and then when you know this, you can you know where you're gonna advertise. What page is the most uh, popular? Then you know where you're gonna advertise. Um, this is the information where where in the world are our visitors and click screen make us follow the path of the user on our site. Um, why use user statistic? Uh, if you if you have a tool that can um, find out how people use the site, what problem the user has encountered, uh, hits per day, popular pages, browser information, then uh, it's, it's easier to convince user, uh, no sorry, it's easier to convince the boss and the colleagues how to redesign and improve the site. Because uh, it might be easy to, to argue with you, but uh, it's harder to argue with the, with the users. Uh, usage statistics model click screen just to show uh, how you can use the information you get from uh, when you know the click screen. Um, for example, if you, you know where the user is coming from to your site, and then you can see that the user is just spending a few seconds on those two, and then uh, it's coming to this destination. If you have a pattern of this, um, let's say you have thousands of, of users that comes in here, spend a few seconds on those, and then goes here, then for me you have a problem because then you know the users are using this as a transportation. So um, for me it would be better to, to move this up closer to um, where they enter the site to avoid um, that you lose lose the user because if the user goes down here and then exit there before he comes here because he doesn't have time to to spend uh, then uh, you 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 lose the user and uh, you make maybe you you uh, you're not going to sell what you're supposed to sell well. search log analysis uh, it's basically used for uh, analyzing queries from the user on the website. It's actually just searches from the users. Uh, and you take that data and uh, you identify what the user is looking for. Uh, you just do an analysis and just for mas matches and mismatches and uh, just basically information uh, about uh, the user's search. Uh, and thereby you can uh, develop controlled vo vocabularies uh, so that uh, the user's uh, search match and experience will be approved, improved. Uh, basically, that uh, it's uh, search uh, the user search is actually getting shown, uh, and that's one of the problems today that uh, many users search for something that the websites doesn't have. So uh, you actually get a lot of queries with uh, non results, and that's a big problem. That's what I mentioned now. Uh, it's a big problem because uh, many queries uh, uh, retrieve zero results. Uh, basically, it means that many users search for something similar, basically what's popular, and they get no results. That's very a uh, big problem for the website. 
and thereby we should determine the reason for these results. Why are uh, the user searching for this and the website website doesn't showing it? Uh, of, uh, after that, we have to take into account that you have to redesign uh, because of the user's uh, search, uh, improve the site, uh, fix the problem, and uh, improve the information retrieval from the user, which is very important uh, when you use search log analytics. Uh, and here you have a basic uh, search log analysis model uh, with the search engine tracking. Uh, it's used to search terms, uh, phrases and keywords, date, time, and IP address, and uh, of course cookies. Basically this is just a simple process to show uh, how it's been done uh, when, you s when you use a search engine, uh, word or phrase. Uh, yeah, search is like no match, search match. Then all of this is being picked up by cookies basically to gather information from, uh, for what the users have been searching for. Uh, and here we have a, a list of a couple of softwares. Uh, this is really good for uh, analyzing um, search and uh, usage. Basically we have Google Anal Analyst Analytics. It's very good, but uh, we want to mention Metacrawler. It's very good because it's actually uh, showing what the users all around the world are searching for, and it's very useful. <coughs> and these are the resources we, we used, so thank you for your attention. We have about uh, contextual inquiry and focus groups. Uh, contextual inquiry is a research technique where we both interview and observe users in the natural habitat. It's a great way to test usability and you get better feedback than if the users were to answer questions only. Um, contextual inquiry defines four principles to guide the interaction. Context. Interviews are conducted in the user's actual workplace. Partnership, user and researcher collaborate, collaborate to understand the user's work. Interpretation, the, user, the researcher shares their interpretations and insights with the user during the interview. Uh, focus, the researcher steers the interaction towards topics which are relevant for the team's scope. Um, planning is the key to a good contextual inquiry. You should assume that it will take more time than you think. And you should never have plans that are set in stone. Things often change as you go, and you need to be a little flexible. There are typically four phases in the interview. The traditional interview, which is the phase where the interviewer gets an overview of the user's work and starts to establish trust with the user. The master-apprentice relation, because it's important to tell the users that we want to learn from them by watching and occasionally interrupting. Observation. The users are the master, and they, try to, they run the show. The interviewer should only be there watching and occasionally interrupt when to ask questions about things that are, are occurred. Summarization. In this phase, the interviewer should summarize what they have learned during the interview, the attentive user's reaction to, to your summary, because you do not want to get it wrong. Before the contextual inquiry, you should remember to bring a printed copy of the protocol, a honorarium if it's appropriate, user consent form and pen. Sh you should bring the name of the user, it's embarrassing not to know. You should bring a note taker if you need to, and some note taking forms, video equip equipment if you need to record, 
pens and extra pad of paper, folder to store your notes, and directions to the meeting place. During the contextual inquiry, you should <coughs> meet the user, introduce everybody, sign the consent form, explain the procedures, ask if there are any questions, ask about demographics, start with the interview, make the user show and not tell, answer questions the user has, inform about the results of the inquiry, thank the user for uh, participating, and give the honorarium if it's appropriate. After the contextual inquiry, you should write thank you emails to other pat all the participants, ask for recommendations, you want to expand your um, user database, send out project links so they can see how it went, analyze your notes and write them up and categorize them, add photos if you have some, store the notes safely to, to take care of users' privacy, create summaries and make them available to all uh, that need them, prepare for the next contextual inquiry and discuss data processing and modeling. Analyzing the gathered data is often the most time-consuming part of a contextual inquiry and it's the only part where you can actually use some kind of tool, but I don't have any examples. Focus group is a group of potential users for your website, being asked a series of questions about what they would like to see on the site while being presented to the prototype of the site. You need to, before the focus group, you need to define the purpose. Uh, this has to be clear and specific. The more defined it is, the, the easier it is uh, with the rest of the process. You need to establish a timeline and start planning weeks ahead of the actual session. You need time to identify the participants, develop and test the questions, locate a site, invite and follow up the participants, and gather the materials for the session. When you are trying to identify the participants, uh, you need to find out who are your potential users. How many do you need to invite to get the number you need, um, wh which would be 6 to 12 persons, and how can you make them want to participate? When you generate these questions, you need to remember that you have only one or two hours, so prepare four to seven questions. You may want to include uh, one or two warm-up questions and then get more serious questions. You need to develop a script, uh, plan on a one or two hour time frame. And there are thr three parts of the focus group script. The opening, where you welcome the group, introduce, introduce the <laughs> purpose and context of the focus group, the question section, when you ask the questions, and the closing section, which wraps up the focus group. You need to select a facilitator. Uh, which is able to keep the discussion on track and make sure that everyone one is heard. When you choose the location, you need to ask yourself questions like what message does this setting send? Is it corporate, upscale, cozy, informal, sterile or inviting? Does the setting encourage conversation? Is it big enough? Is it easy to access? When you conduct the focus group, you'll need um, things like notepads and pencils, computers with presentations, and um, things you genera generally need for a meeting. The facilitator should arrive before the participants uh, to set out the refreshments and arrange the, route, the room so all participants can view each other. When you conduct the focus group, you make sure you record the session. Uh, you set the tone, the par participants should have fun and feel good about mm -hmm. the session. Make sure everyone is uh, heard. Get full answers, not just we need more money, but uh, more like we need more money too, and an example. Monitor time closely, don't exceed time limits. Keep the discussion on track and try to answer all or most of the questions. After the focus group, uh, you need to look over your written notes to clarify and uh, to fill in missing parts. Report the results, summarize each meeting, analyze the summaries, write a final report and prioritize your information. <coughs> Since the users often do not have the necessary language to articulate what they want or need, focus groups are not always a good tool for information architectures. A public demonstration is not a good way to test the usability, as it does not come close to everyday use of the site. We did not find any software to down download, but we found some sites um, offering tools for focus groups online, and this is an example of the site. 
Um, this site offers real-time online focus groups uh, divided into two groups. The common chat-based online focus groups and visual webcam and audio online focus groups. Mm. These are our sources. Uh, how do you choose who is the member of the focus group? Uh, you have to take from the potential users of your website mm -hmm. and ask them to take part in uh, the okay. And then, <coughs> do they have experience with the website? Or? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. Bec uh, it depends on if you're working on a new website or if you're trying to recreate the old one. We are Guillem Cucurulli and Alex Bonillo, and welcome to Card Sorting. Uh, here you can see the table of contents, what we are going to explain today. We will start by a brief um, definition, types, techniques you can, you can do while a uh, card sorting season, how to conduct one, best practices, some advice, and so forth. Alright, so, definition. Uh, when you are creating a, an information architecture and you are in the part of research when you want to get information from users and information about how can you help them with your site, uh, one of the tools you can use is card sorting, which consists of, by means of cards, pieces of paper or even software. Uh, users can organize uh, different topics or chunks of information of your website in different categories and then uh, put names on, on it. This information is very important for designers and ones that want to create the uh, information architecture as, as uh, they can help you to, for example, improve your website structure as the uh, content is organized in a way that uh, users can understand because uh, chunks of information have uh, logical connections within them. Then uh, it can make you take good decisions about front page because uh, users can identify in the, se in the sessions which is the most important content in your in your website, or what is important in web in your website, to, so you can put in the front page, and then improve lab labeling and navigation, as they can help you with the names of the of the categories. And uh, as I told, there are um, logical connections between different chunks of information or topics. Then there are uh, two types of card sorting. The first one, the open one, uh, as I told, users must. Uh, organize the topics in different categories and then they can create, they must create the names of these categories. Uh, this is good because this uh, type is uh, important because it can give you information not just about the logical uh, connections I told you, but uh, about the names that these categories can have and can fit well with them. Then you have closed card sorting, which is uh, almost the same, but now uh, designers give the names of the category, so you must choose one of the different topics you organize. Then uh, you can uh, do uh, card sorting session uh, in these uh, four ways. Uh, the first one is uh, just with a designer and one user at the same time. And uh, the user, while, while the user is organizing the topics, uh, he must uh, think aloud, so a designer can take notes about 
why a user is organizing the, the information that way. Then we have the group uh, uh, ways. The first one, uh, I mean, it's almost the same. Difference is in this one, uh, all users are working together. And in the, in the first one, each uh, user is working alone in different rooms or whatever. And then designer in, in, this, in this technique, designer uh, uh, have to give some information before starting the, the session of card sorting. And then after it, can make some questions uh, to get information about the organization of the topic. And then you have also uh, remote uh, computer-based systems, but this is not as um, um, useful as the previous one, because in this one you cannot get information about why users organize the information the way they do. Well, the first step when conducting a card sort session is selecting the participants who have to be a representative sample of the users who are using the final web. Then you have to prepare the card. That means that you have to select and create a list of the content topics you want to categorize. This content is the most important of frequently, of frequently used content in your website that you want to sort or separate in categories. Then you have to decide if you are conducting a physical session or an online session using a software. And after that, you have to set up and plan the session. That means um, deciding where are you holding the session. Um, then you have to plan having someone taking notes. It could be uh, ourselves or an assistant. And then you have to think about incentives to get participants to to do your your session because you are using their free time and they may not be willing to do it for free. Then and here comes the main part of the of, of the study is when the <coughs> user is sorting the cards. First of all, you have to explain him what do you want to do, uh, what do you want him to do, and obviously you you have to you have to differentiate between asking asking him a closing a closed card sorting or an open card sorting. You have to remind them to talk out loud so you can you can know what are they thinking when they are sorting and you can take notes of that. Um, you can you. You have to allow them to add new cards and remove cards. Adding new cards is used to to add new topics or categories. If the if the participant thinks that a new category is necessary, or or that he would put a new topic which is useful for them, and then adding cards is also useful to add lateral navigation between different topics. And removing cards is for deleting topics which the user thinks are not useful or deleting categories categories which the user thinks are useless. Then when they have finished you can ask them if there are too many groups in the table, if there are too many categories. If the answer is yes, then you can ask the user to combine the categories so you um, get rid of ambiguous categories. You can also ask him to name every category. So even if you are conducting a closed sorting session in which in which the the levels are already made by yourself um, this is a way to validate your labeling after that you have all the data all the data and now you have to start the data analysis you can do a qualitative analysis by just observing the notes you have taken and then you have you can do a quantitative analysis which means a numerical analysis by observing which cards appear together more often or how often cards appear in a specific category. At, at the end, you have to create a report to show your, your team workers the, the results of your study. All right. Uh, there are uh, some things you can do to get uh, better <coughs> results from, the, from these seasons, these sessions, sorry. Uh, the first thing you should do is uh, limit the number of cards as you cannot pretend a user to sort 1,000 or 2,000 cards because he could get tired. Then you should randomize the order of presentation of the topics, the chunks of information, because it's clear that uh, users uh, work better at the beginning of the season because they are not as tired as at the, at the end. So every single topic uh, should have the, the probability to appear or to be sorted at the beginning of the season. 
then you should tell the participants before starting the, the session how long it will take because maybe they don't want to stay in the room for one or two hours and they can go if they want. Then you should uh, mix uh, both open and closed card sorting because then in this way you can get uh, a lot of information uh, as I told you like uh, from the open um, card sorting you can get information about that logical connections between topics and then from the closed uh, you can also um, take good names to to name this uh, category well here are some software utilities to do a card sorting session but you have to pay to use them so we were not able to test them and <coughs> This has these are the references. Um, <coughs> so if, uh, if they're going to recommend to mix the renew um, or close cards, which do you use, open or close? Um, if you already have a labeling made, so you already have categories and names for every category, mm -hmm. you can do a close because you have already um, separate categories. But if you um, don't know how to split the content, then do an open and the user will split the content for you. Yeah, so you can use that. Maybe open at the beginning and close and close. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Personas uh, part, and uh, it's how different users experience to surf and navigate the Moldias. I have used the Moldias website for example for an example. And uh, uh, we are using the site and why and how. Um, people from teens to older people are using the site teens from 13 to 19, middle age, 20 to 45, all the people from 50 to 75. Why are they using to uh, it? It's to find the concept to visit, how to find location and when it starts, uh, and how is uh, they are accessing the website by mobile, PC and iPad. The teens use uh, ofte interested in different concepts of hell at um for museum. There are hip hop and pop. And, and this explain how they uh, get uh, an uh, uh, and uh, and so on there. Uh, this is uh, the search for tickets. Uh, and this only explains uh, how uh, to uh, get the uh, find the tickets and so on. And the location is shown and the start and for the concert search is shown. Uh, find a way to Umstas uh, is explained. And maybe the thing uh, that is important is how they access the website. And they usually access it from uh, the mobile phone or iPad, for <laughs> example. Uh, and I also have uh, another 
the, the middle A user, middle A user is uh, is uh, have the same uh, way to uh, actually uh, uh, find the artist and so on. Um, Uh, the uh, the main difference is maybe they they go to the tickets office to buy it, uh, tickets. Uh, uh, it's only uh, how they find the concert and so on. And then you have the older people, um, and it's very much the same way to uh, find uh, the concert they want to visit. Um, and they also uh, go to the tickets office. Many of uh, the older people don't use as much uh, mobile phones and PCs as uh, younger people, and uh, that's why they go and buy the tickets from the office. This is our practical uh, personal diagram. Uh, uh, this is uh, maybe uh, how they are going to find a new managing director. And uh, it's more, uh, it's easier to use. Uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, it's not so easy to explain, but. Uh, 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 what this is uh, what the, the knowledge uh, factor and how much uh, how much uh, experience and knowledge he, uh, the new director of Molde Jazz should have and uh, this is uh, where the persona should uh, be uh, in this area here um, well that's uh, um So this uh, Persona diagram is uh, uh, I got from AYA Institute tools. So this is a way of, uh, this is a tool then. Ja. It's, uh, I don't go into the tools too much. So uh, this is the presentation. <coughs> well, you talk that the children should study age in this case. Yes. I don't know if I would call twenty middle age. No, wait. Uh, so that, that was one factor. So you could have done it like, for example, on um, there's uh, three groups of people that go to Molde Jazz: people that live in Molde, people that live in Norway. Molde and people that live somewhere else. 
to and our topic is uh, user testing. So what is uh, user testing? Uh, user testing is a technique used to evaluate a product by testing it on users. In basic user testing, you ask a user to sit in front of a computer, open a web browser and look for specific specific information or complete a task using the site you're studying. Uh, the user uh, might, for example, be given three minutes to complete each task. And uh, the user should also talk out loud while he's navigating on the website and thereby give uh, uh, valuable information to how he's interacting with the website. And uh, the user uh, is then observed as to what he does, where he succeeds, and where he has difficulties with the user interface. Good ideas uh, often come up during the test. Taking notes during the test is therefore important. Counting clicks and recording time is also important for gathering valuable information that can be an analyzed later on and used to compare, imp compare improvements in the design. Uh, there are many ways to structure this uh, re research. You might want to capture this the session on audio or video, or you might want to use specific software to analyze the usability, making the process of user testing more efficient and precise. Uh, you might use the existing website itself, a high-fidelity web-based prototype, or even a low-fidelity paper prototype, such as a sketched uh, drawing. So, uh, where do we perform uh, user tests? Uh, performing user testing is an important part of uh, developing a solid strategy. When you know what users want, it will work as a roadmap for the design work and uh, uh, implementation work. Also, managers don't uh, know what the users want. From our perspective, from the inside of our company, the, the website might uh, look reasonable, uh, but for someone outside the company, simple aspects might, seem, uh, might be understood and cause confusion leading to a bad user experience. Uh, to be able to create a successful website, the process of uh, observing users carry out specific tasks is important. Uh, it gives a big insight into what works and what doesn't work. It also tells us why things don't work. This information is, uh, yet again, highly valuable when it comes to creating an optimal website. If uh, visitors can't find the inform uh, information easily, they may choose to leave the website and go elsewhere, usually to a competitor. So, by performing uh, user testing, you're also most likely you're yeah, you're also most likely to save time on the design and implementation phases so much that the that you shorten the overall project. How uh, there are different types of testers, and they can be di divided into experts and novices because they demonstrate very different behavior. In the exploratory phase, the task distribution should follow these lines. Easy to impossible. Task starts easy to make the user feel confident and, and comfortable. Later, include some uh, difficult or impossible task to see how the site performs under duress. Known item to exhaustive. Ask user to find a specific answer or item or ask them to <coughs> find everything they can, can on a particular topic. Topic to task. Ask some topical or subject oriented questions. For example, find something on micro elect electronics. Also give them some uh, task to complete, for example, buy a phone. Artificial to real. Most tasks will be ar artificial but try to build some realistic scenarios for the tester. <coughs> there are different types of data the test can provide. First is quantitative data, such as success rates, task time, error rates, and certification questionnaire ratings and qualitative data, such as obs observations about pathways participants took, problems experienced, comments or recommendations, and answers to open-ended qu ended questions. <coughs> um, the software or yeah, 
uh, the software we chose to have an example of is Moir and Prejack. Moir provides you with the hard data uh, and vivid, undeniable examples of usability problems. It also uh, automatically calculates and graphs effectiveness, efficiency, and certification, saving you time on analysis and reporting. Prejack. Uh, tree testing is a usability technique for evaluating the findability of topics in a website. It's also known as reverse card sorting or card-based cl classification. Tree testing is done on a simplified text version of the site structure without the influence of navigation aids and visual design. These are our sources. Thank you.